for this given vector field, let's say you have a <laughs> path C1 given by this RT <coughs> equal to uh, T comma 2T with T between 0 to 2. And uh, <coughs> let's talk about another path. Say this one's now parametrized by t comma t squared, again with uh, t between 0 and 2. <coughs> Question I want to solve is compute dr and fdr. So compute this uh, line integral over c1 and c2. That's the question I want to solve. Is it recording? Yeah. Okay. All right. So in all these questions, here's the single most important thing that you have to know. It's this trick. And it covers about 70% of what you have to know for these questions. Okay? The single trick is to Hello? divide by dt and multiply by dt. It's one thing. If you remember to do this, then you'll be able to, to solve most of these line integrals. So let's see how this thing helps us. Let's first do C1. All right, on C1, <coughs> you first divide by dt multiplied by dt. And this immediately tells us that because you have dt here, I should put the values of t here. What should I put here? 0 to 2. 0 to 2 because t goes from 0 to 2. By the way, what is c1? c1 is a straight path. See, it's a line equation, right? Uh, they're both first order, the graph will be a line. And when t is 0, it's 0 comma 0, so it starts at the origin. When t is 2, it, it ends at 2 comma 4. So it's a straight line from 0 comma 0 to 2 comma 4. That's what c1 is. OK. So that's, that's what <laughs> we figured out. Now what about this? What is dr dt? That's taking R and differentiating by T, right? And because we are on C1, we're trying to differentiate this by T. Is that good? Right. And then still, uh, this F here, F is being evaluated on this curve as you're integrating. So, so as you're multiplying these two things and adding them up over this C1, at each point of C1, each, each point on this path, I have to evaluate the function f. Okay. Now what does that mean? That means because this is your x and that's your y, so it, at any, any moment t, at, for, for any value of t, the x coordinate is t and y coordinate is 2t. Is that right? Yeah. Therefore, when you evaluate f on this c1, it means that you should replace x by t and y by 2t. That's what it means to evaluate the function on a path. All right. So that's, that's the, probably that's the only other thing that you have to know other than dividing by dt and multiplying by dt. Because once you divide by dt and multiply by dt, it's pretty straightforward what it means, right? OK, so let's continue. So what this means is first, F has to be evaluated on C1, meaning that X has to be replaced by T, whereas Y should be replaced by 2T. So let's do that. So we have 3 times T 
plus 2t squared, comma, 2 times 2t minus t. That's your f, evaluated on this curve c1. Dotted with, what's dr dt? What do you get if you differentiate this by t? 2. 1, and then 2, 1 comma 2. And you just compute this. Afterwards, it's just a regular integral because everyone knows how to do dot products, right? You multiply the x components together, y components together, and you add them up, right? So let's do that. 0 to 2, 3t plus 4t squared. When you multiply by 1, it's just by itself. So 3t plus 4t squared is what you get from the first one times 1 plus. That's 4t minus t is 3t, right? So it's 3t times 2. And that has to be integrated, which is, let's see, uh, that's 6t plus 3t, that's 9t. 0 to 2, 9t plus 4t squared integrating by t is 9 over 2t squared plus 4 over 3t cubed. <coughs> and you have to plug in 2 and 0. 2 to the third is 8. 8 times 4 is 32, whereas this is uh, 18. So 18 plus 32 over 3. And that's 54, 86 over 3. I did that last bit a little quick, because uh, that's just some integral that you can do. Uh, it's an easy integral, right? So that part, uh, maybe I made a mistake. I, uh, yeah, but you can check, okay? Yeah. Uh, what's really important is to be able to know that you have to divide by dt, multiply by dt, and then into x and y, you should be plugging in your rt. Okay? <coughs> Got it? Now let's, let's look at c2. What is c2? This is like uh, y value is square of the x value, so it's, it's like y equal to x squared. It's, part of a parabola that, that connects from 0, 0 and 2, 4. If you plug in 2 here, it's 2, 4. So you might realize that uh, it's like this. See, here's 0, 0, and here's 2, 4. C1 is like a straight path from here to there, 2, 4. Whereas C2 is like a curve connecting the two. That's your C2. These are both paths. They have directions. Okay? By the way, if you integrate 2, 4 to 0, 0 that way, then the integral will have the negative value. Right? All right, so let's try to do the second one. So, this question is asking, what if you took a different path from the first one? Okay. Would you get the same value or not? Okay. I'm just curious. Okay, so let's see what happens. What do you do here? What's the first step? <laughs> what do you do? Plug. <coughs> we depend the right. You set your integral up and plug in your x and y values in the function. What's the very first thing that you have to do? Divide by dt and multiply by dt. Okay? That's the most important thing. Okay? Don't ever forget that. Divide by dt and multiply by dt. Because once you do that, everything else just falls into place. See, this forces you to say, hey, I have dt. I, I, sh I better put my t values here. And t goes from 0 to 2, right? I see d dr dt. And that says, oh, I better differentiate this. Because that's what it means, right? The only other thing that you have to remember is to evaluate this function on this RT, right? So instead of x, you put t, and instead of y, you put t squared. That's the only other thing that you have to remember. So I would say like, this procedure covers like 70% of doing the question. That doesn't mean I'm going to give you 70% of partial credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, it, it is that important. Okay. So 0 to 2, uh, <coughs> f, let's see, 3t plus t squared to the squared, 2 times t squared minus t, 
That's your F evaluated on C2, right? Dotted with, what's the RDT? 1 comma 2T. Mm -hmm. Okay. And afterwards, this is just a uh, straightforward calculation. Let's see, that's 3T plus T to the fourth times 1. 3t plus t to the fourth <coughs> times 1. And then 2t squared times 2t is 4t cubed. And negative t times 2t is minus 2t squared. And then you're integrating this by t. 3t integrates to 3 over 2t squared t to the fourth is one-fifth of t to the fifth, and plus, that's t to the fourth minus two over three t cubed, and you have to plug in two and zero. <coughs> Let's see, that's uh, 16, 6, 22, so I, I got the integral part as 22. Two plugged in is here, it's uh, 32 over five, 8 times 2 minus uh, 16 over 3. Okay, this is a little ugly, but uh, if I put everything over 15, let's see, what what do you get? That's uh, 330. That's plus 96 minus 80. <coughs> so 16 added to this is 346 over 15. So that's the integral. And uh, we see that the two answers do not agree. Okay. So the lesson learned here is, uh, first lesson, this is how you calculate. Okay. If you can calculate this, that's great. That's absolutely necessary for you to know. Now another thing that you learn is that even if the beginning and the end point is the same, when you do the integral on two different paths, you may get two different answers. Actually, in most cases, you get two different answers. Okay. Now, what I want to show you later is that there is this special kind of vector field, which we call conservative vector fields, uh, that's path independent. So it doesn't depend on them. <coughs> there are some class of vector fields where it on, the, the integral only depends on the beginning and the end not on the path that you take. So we're going to look at that later. <coughs>